What's up, everybody? 289 coming at you today. We got another One Piece chapter review, and it's One Piece chapter 1067. And uh, this chapter, it should have just been called the Worldwide Vegapunk. <laughs> you know, we find out in this chapter that uh, Vegapunk basically wants to create the internet in One Piece, and that's really interesting. If you guys can't do me a favor, like, dislike the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. We'll, we'll have more One Piece content coming up. Uh, you know, definitely uh, the comments are really cool. Uh, if anyone ever comments on a video down below, I love that. You know, it's really cool. I get to interact with people and just have a conversation about One Piece. And, you know, there's been a few comments every now and then. That's really cool. And I really do appreciate it. So keep that up. And, uh, you know, subscribe, like, turn on the notification bell. You, you know, whenever I do a One Piece chapter review, you guys will get it. And, uh, you know, I'm having really a lot of fun with this. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm enjoying this last arc of One Piece and, uh, you know, everything about it. So, yeah. Well, anyways, uh, we, yeah. So we find out in this chapter that Vegapunk wants to create the World Wide Web, right? And basically what he wants to do is broadcast information and, to everyone out and on the, in the world and with like one hive mind and it's just producing a whole bunch of information to everyone and he also wants other people to add information on into this like hive mind kind of thing and from there that's how information will get dispersed and it's basically the internet right and the internet has its positives and it has its negatives right you got the good and the bad right you get the good information and then you get people who put ridiculous things out there and it's like is this really true is this really a thing and you're like no 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 this is ridiculous right well that's the give and take with everything right everything has give and take everything has its negatives and Jim Bay does talk about that and of course uh it's something that Vegapunk doesn't think about and and to me that's uh, basically it, it gives you a little insight into his character right he is this genius who invents these he invents a lot of good stuff but he doesn't think about the ramifications of what he's inventing. He just cares about creating the next best thing, right? That is his thing. He, he just cares about creating something really cool with the knowledge that he has because he needs to put it out there. And he doesn't really think about the negatives. And, and, and I feel like that's a lot of inventors. It's a lot of people out there that when they invent something, they never really don't weigh in the pros and cons, right? Or they don't think about the cons. They just think about, oh my God, this thing's gonna be amazing, you know? But that's with everything though. You know what I mean? Everything's gonna have pros and cons. Not everything's gonna be perfect. And, you know, that's just par for the course, I think, for an inventor. And we find out why Vegapunk's head is really huge. So, one, he was born a genius. He didn't eat a brain. He didn't eat a fruit to become a genius. He was born one. Two, he ate a fruit called brain brain fruit, which basically allows him to store all kinds of knowledge. And that's why his head was so big. And then from there, what he ended up doing was he ended up splitting up his mind and all the knowledge that he had to, to decrease his brain. And he's basically the main Vegapunk is like this antenna. He has an apple on his head, and it's basically like an antenna, and he broadcasts everything out to the rest of punk records and um, and the rest of the Vegapunks and all that stuff, right? So that's what he's doing there. And, you know, it's, it's really cool, and it's a really interesting concept, and, uh, you know, and... <laughs> Maybe at some point the One Piece world, One Piece world gets in there, and I think this is his big dream. Maybe his uh, awakening devil fruit allows him to create this thing where he can make an unlimited storage or something like that, and you everybody could just maybe that's how it's done. Maybe he just awakens his devil fruit, and all of a sudden all of this information just gets broadcast into his brain and into his mind, and that's just how it works. And he's basically the hive man and hive mind and the antenna of the entire operation. That is very possible. I just thought about that just now. I mean, that could be a possibility. Because, I mean, his basically the brain brain fruit is, is storage. So if he awakens the devil fruit, what is that? What is storage going to do? Expand and constantly expand. So that's what I think is, is, is going to happen. And that's really interesting to, to take in. And, uh, you know, and then from there, um, of course, uh, you know, he explains everything, how Punk Records is working with the six Vegapunks and how everyone is a different personality or whatever the case may be. They all share the same brain but they all have different personalities, right? They're different parts of Vegapunk. And, you know, Punk Records is basically this database, basically, that holds everything. So, you know, and, um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much it from there. And then from there, Bonnie, you know, of course, brings out the lightsaber. We find, you know, Bonnie's pissed off about Kuma and what happened, you know, because basically Kuma got turned into a lifeless machine. And nobody knows why. Nobody understands why. Nobody gets it. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure Kuma had baked in a deal where, um, and Dragon was, and Dragon was probably in on this too, that he became this lifeless robot for a reason. And I think this chapter gives some light on that, right? 
because well let's let, let's start here first bonnie's pissed right bonnie's pissed and he's ready to cut she's ready to cut down back up on grand and this, and this part was really really hilarious it was this was really really funny so then he tries to he turns on the lightsaber tries to cut cut him down and then from there bugs <laughs> whole bunch of bugs swarm to the light and they freak out bonnie she passes out whatever right and of course, you know, Vegapunk understands that, you know, of course, she, Bonnie wants him dead because of what happened about the Kuma. And from there, you know, we find out that Vegapunk, um, you know, was talking about the Devil Fruit in, in Wano Kuni because he was able to duplicate, he was trying to duplicate Dragon's Devil Fruit for whatever reason. I mean, uh, Kaido's Devil Fruit for whatever reason. And we find out it was successful and that it worked. And it was something to do with the lineage factor and all those kind of things and whatever. So Momonosuke ate the fruit and, you know, they're talking about it, how cool it was. He was able to launch fire blasts and all sorts of crazy stuff. And then there was one and Vegapunk asked the question, what color was the dragon? And Luffy says pink and Vegapunk just basically hits his head. He's like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> it was supposed to be blue. You know what I'm saying? And we find out that Vegapunk is a perfectionist, even though he completed the process, created a basic carbon copy of a devil fruit, which is really, really good right even though it worked it didn't because it was pink <laughs> it's just the it, for for Vegapunk, it's about the details right it's about the de like he needs to nail every little thing about his invention and we're starting to understand that maybe Vegapunk is a genius and he's a great inventor but he makes mistakes right i think that's his thing like even though he did the thing that one little mistake basically changes everything right he's like it's a failure right so then we find out about the robot and this is where we're gonna get we're gonna jump into the kuma thing okay um what we find out about the giant robot was that it was made um that it attacked the land of mary joa 200 years ago okay it was power ball it was it was it had a power source something powered it nobody knows what it is and they're still trying to figure it out nobody knows um maybe it has something to do with sun guy nika's fruit we don't know right something powered these machines and what happened 200 years ago was that all of a sudden the robot attacked medi joa during the time the fishmen were trying were, were trying to get their rights or something like the fishmen were saving or whatever the case may be we know it was built now over 900 years ago this thing operated on its own for some reason right this is where Again, and we're going to get into Vega. This is okay. Notice where Vegapunk failed with his exp like he he created the devil fruit and was asking about it. Right. And then, you know, he made this mistake. What if there was a situation where Vegapunk is trying to understand how this machine did attack on its own? What powered it? And by mistake was able to complete that process and figure it out in Kuma. Because we get to the end of this chapter, right? And, you know, Bartholomew, the, the CP0 agents landed at Punk Hazard. They're here to kill Vegapunk. They're here to jump off the Seraphim as well. And Rob Lucci's there, Kefka, I forgot the other guy's name. Um, I think Stussy's there as well. So what ends up happening is, is when CP0 lands on Punk records all of a sudden Bartholomew Kuma gets up and starts moving okay and starts moving and on its own so whatever was programmed within this giant robot to for, for whatever reason attack the red line specifically during the Fishman right Fishman Island rights thing okay Kuma is now acting on his own and moving and doing whatever the case may be. So this goes into the pacifistas and the basically where I'm leading towards all this is basically order 66 on the world government. I think Vegapunk figured it out somehow and the pacifistas along with Kuma all have this built into them and have when whatever is triggering them to do this 
is being done through Kuma right now. We're seeing it happen right now. And whatever it is, we're going to see it on a bigger scale, I think, in my opinion, when it comes to the pacifistas and, 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 and Medijoa and all that stuff. So that's what I think is, I think this, that's where this is leading. And I think the point of that part of the chapter where he's talking about, obviously, this giant attacking the red line, specifically during the Fishman rights, something, there was something programmed, I think there was something programmed in the machine at a certain point, you need to get up and do something. And you need to, you need to attack the people on the red line. That's, I think something is inside Kuma and the possibilities that have that programming and that Vegapunk probably did it by accident because he does he still doesn't understand how it happened and what was the power source. I think he figured it out. And I think the answer is within Kuma. And if he gets his hands on Kuma, he can, he's like, okay, this is what I did. And I, this probably needs to be replicated or has been replicated in the pacifistas, right? That's what I think. And, you know, of course, um, I still think, Vegapunk has Kuma like in in a in in a drive somewhere or whatever. I still think Kuma's alive somewhere, and I think once you connect this thing to the to Kuma, he will come back to life, and he will become Bartolome Kuma again. Uh, and what I think is going to happen here is because what's interesting is that CP Zero lands, they get to Vegapunk's island. Of course, they're here to kill Vegapunk, and the Straw Hats are here. So the Straw Hats are here, and it looks like we're going to get round two with CP0 versus Straw Hats. Are we going to get another Luffy versus Rob Lucci fight? I don't know. <laughs> right? I have no idea. But that would be really, really interesting. So we find out Vegapunk wants to be taken off of this island. Now, I think what's going to happen here is, and what I think Vegapunk meant by him dying, was that I think Punk Records will be destroyed I think the 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 Vegapunks will be destroyed, and I think the actual Vegapunk will possibly transfer himself to another body, where he can be still be Vegapunk, but he's in a different body and everything else is destroyed, and he has to redo everything all over again to fulfill his dream of Punk Records. That's what I think, and I think he's gonna be on a journey with the Straw Hats. And now we get to the end of the chapter, and Kuma is moving. Now, what could happen here is, is that I don't know where Kuma's going to go, but it looks like he's heading. He, trouble's happening on Punk Records. Kuma is moving on his own and heading in a direction. We don't know what direction he's going. I don't know how Kuma's going to get there because the island is surrounded by water, right? I mean, what is he going to do? Like walk in the water or whatever? Uh, maybe use the pop off for to transfer himself over to Punk Records. I don't know, right? We don't know. But what I... What I'm thinking here is, is that Kuma's heading towards Punk Records to save Vegapunk, right? And the Revolutionary Pirates are going to follow him or figure out where he's going and then head towards Punk Records to help out Vegapunk here. And that's how Kuma gets to Punk Records. That's how he becomes, that's how he comes back to life. That's how this whole thing is going to unfold. And maybe we get a meeting here with Dragon and Luffy talking about things and whatever the case may be, we get more inside on Dragon. That's how I think this is going to play out. This is a really good chapter. There's a lot of information in this chapter that was put in here that, you know, you start to connect the dots, right? The giant robot. I think the reasoning that was mentioned, yeah, it would happen during Fishman, uh, the Fishman Island rates, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think something triggered, I think something during that event triggered the robot and was programmed to activate during that time to attack the red line. I think Vegapunk was trying to understand how and why that was done. I think he put that programming or did something similar and doesn't know that Bartholomew Kuma has that programming inside him, which is why he's moving right now and heading towards punk records and i think we're gonna get a clash here coming up and there's a lot of information in this chapter and really cool stuff a lot of good things happening in one piece and um you know we're on a break next week unfortunately it's thanksgiving next week anyway i'm yeah, i'm fine with it next week we'll get a chapter and next week i think shit's just, it's gonna go nuts anyways guys, that's it for me that's the chapter uh i think it was a really good chapter um you know punk records is i mean punk island's gonna be a really good chapter it, it, the way this is shaping up and how this is ending, um, whether, whether it's ending or not right now, I don't know. But, I mean, I think this is going to be a little bit of a short arc. I think what a plan is to be a short arc, and we're going to hell back next. And that'll be an extended arc there. But, yeah, that's it. Guys, have a wonderful, blessed day. Take care. Keep reading One Piece. Like I said, like, dislike, comment, subscribe to the channel.
course, I'm going to have more One Piece chapter reviews. I really do appreciate it. Give me your thoughts down below so I can communicate and talk to you guys about everything because this chapter was really cool. And if you guys have any ideas, let me know. And what do you guys think about the whole thing of Vegapunk trying to figure out the programming within the Pasifisas? And he figured it out with Kuma but doesn't know that he did. That's my opinion. Anyways, guys, that's it, guys. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Take care. Keep reading One Piece. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.